What's going on everybody? Mortem here, this time bringing you five of my favorite cheese tactics in video games. So 100%ing a lot of games and just playing a lot of games in general, you naturally run into a fair amount of cheese tactics otherwise known as cheesing a game. Now, if for some reason you're unfamiliar with this term, basically it means that you found a way to circumvent the challenge of a game, usually by exploiting some sort of mechanic, or in some cases it's not exactly intended, but you're not really doing anything exploitative either, which we'll get into. Now, I'm gonna start this video off with the classics, and first on that particular subsection is the Kineticist from Kingmaker and Wrath of the Righteous. This actually works in both. So this bit of cheese sees us exploiting an infusion of the kineticist known as Deadly Earth, as well as the wall infusions, but primarily Deadly Earth, which you could get from the earth and fire elements respectively, and it becomes available at level 13. Now the reason you can use Deadly Earth to cheese things is because Deadly Earth is one of a few different attacks in the game that actually don't require an attack roll. Basically, it's an AoE, and they don't even get to save against it, really. If an enemy walks into it, they just take the damage, which in a game that is primarily balanced around things getting an attack roll or a save against the damage to at least half it, not getting those things is incredibly effective. Now, if you only have one kineticist in your party, you might not notice this being as strong. However, if you were to, say, group up three or four kineticists by making mercenaries and then getting this infusion, you can basically one-shot most enemies or challenging boss fights, etc., as long as you get the chance to cast your Deadly Earth, which can be stacked on top of each other. And if you're unaware, kineticists already do insane amounts of damage, which combined with Deadly Earth makes it an incredibly strong combo that will absolutely annihilate most enemies, while requiring you to do very little because kineticist damage is primarily based off of their level, so you don't even need to equip the mercenaries you make to do this. Now, next up on the list, we have the Witcher 3 and the Igni sign. I've actually made a video about this one as well, but the burn mechanic in the Witcher 3 is a little bit busted. And by this, I mean that if you can set an enemy on fire to give them the burning status effect, the vast majority of enemies in the Witcher 3 will actually just stand there and sort of be stunlocked while they're burning. If you take the time to attack the enemy afterwards, the status effect will actually go away. So something I found out very early on in my Witcher 3 playthroughs was that if you stacked sign intensity, and there's a few different builds around this, I've made a few myself, but basically stack sign intensity to make the chance of setting an enemy on fire with Igni 100%, unless they're just immune to fire damage or something, then you effectively have a way to stunlock every enemy around you almost permanently, so long as you have the ability to cast the sign. In fact, there's really only a couple of enemies in the game that are actually immune to the stun part of it. And usually, the enemies that are immune to the stun aren't immune to the burning, but nonetheless, there are bosses and things that are immune to the stun part of it, so you're usually going to want to add some sword skills, etc. to actually deal with those fights. The vast majority of the game can can literally just be walked through with this method, and it's a lot of fun. Now, the next two spots are actually from the Divinity Original Sin series. You can sort of use them in both, but one of them is easier in each one of the games, so I decided to separate them. But it is possible to do each of these in each game. But starting with Original Sin 2, we have Lava. As far as environmental effects go, Lava is the be-all end-all in Original Sin 1 and 2. If something is in Lava, it dies, period. You know, like Lava. And, naturally, there's a few places in the game where you can find lava. There's also a teleport skill in the game, which means you can teleport enemies. And if you put two and two together, you can quite easily teleport enemies into lava which instantly kills them, and you can actually kill a few bosses this way. However, there is another method as well. There is a metamorph skill known as, I believe it's terrain swap or something like that, that will let you swap the lava with another bit of terrain somewhere around you, which means you can put the lava under an enemy as well, though the effect is largely the same. Now, really the only drawback to this is that if you don't hit the enemy first, you won't get any experience. So you do need to hit them at least once if you want the experience from killing them, ideally. But either way, very effective way to go. 
And then for number two on our list, again, this will work in one and two, but in my opinion, it's a bit easier done in Original Sin 1, and that is abusing the weight mechanics. So because of all the teleporting and moving things around that's available to you in Original Sin, if you teleport something onto an enemy, it takes damage based on the weight of that object. So you can move things around, drop things on enemies, etc., and they take damage based on the weight. However, if you then get, say, a large container, you can start putting weighty objects into them. However, this is a bit busted because there's no limit on how much of anything you can put in any given container. The limiting factor is meant to be the weight. So in theory, you could stuff something like a chest full of as much stuff as it can possibly be full of, and you just wouldn't be able to carry it because of the weight. Original Sin also comes with a skill called telekinesis, which lets you move anything a certain distance regardless of how much it weighs. So basically, with this, you are able to load up a chest full of the heaviest things in the game, which tend to be the elemental barrels like the water, oil, and poison barrels that you can find in-game. They weigh about 60 kilos, I think it is. And you can find tons of these barrels everywhere. You can put them all into a chest, and then you can use the telekinesis skill to drop that chest onto enemies and instantly kill them. In fact, you can kill the very last boss this way in just a couple of hits. And this particular method is actually used for the speedrun of the game, which is a hilarious way to beat the title and never fails to make me laugh, frankly. Because the single most dangerous thing in Original Sin is in fact a chest full of barrels. And that brings us to the last item on our list, and that is the Wand of Monster Summoning from Baldur's Gate 1. So a fun thing about the way Baldur's Gate 1 works is that as the difficulty goes up, Things like enemies will have their health and damage scaled, but if you've played the game a lot, you might eventually realize that your summons also get affected by this, meaning that the viability of the summons you're using is directly in relation to the difficulty you are playing on, which in general is a handy thing to know, because on the higher difficulties, like Legacy of Ball that was added with the Enhanced Edition, enemies can absolutely destroy you very, very easily. So how do we get around that? Well, we summon some monsters who then get the same bonuses that the enemies get, and in comes the Wand of Monster Summoning. And it does exactly that. It summons a bunch of monsters who effectively act as incredible meat shields while you actually hit the enemy, which makes the incredibly difficult Legacy of Ball much, much easier. Now, once upon a time, you actually used to be able to do this almost endlessly, basically until you crashed the game. However, later editions of the title have actually put a small cap of five summoned monsters on the screen at any given time, which, while definitely a little bit less, the fact that you can recharge the wand, so to speak, to give it more charges of summoned monster, and it's pretty easy to bypass that restriction altogether just through the fact that you can keep resummoning them very quickly when the new ones die. And overall, it's just very fun to mess around with. But there you guys go. There are five cheesy tactics for video games, some of the ones I've personally enjoyed very, very much. I certainly hope you guys enjoyed the video. If there's any particular way to cheese something that you enjoyed, by all means, tell me about it down in the comments section below which of course means to like, comment, subscribe, all that YouTube jazz, but regardless of any of that, truly, just thank you so much for watching. May you wander in wisdom and have an amazing day.